welcome to part two of the New York City slash Asian Readathon vlog. I decided to split it into two parts because when I was filming my first two days here, I could already tell that it was going to be a long ass vlog. This is part two. It's going to cover my last day at my conference, which is 99U, and that is a creative conference that's hosted by Adobe. Then after the conference is over, I'm going to hang out with Emma from Emma Books. And tomorrow, before I head out for my flight in Portugal, I'm gonna squeeze in some brunch time with Nikki from XO Nikki and Jocelyn from Yogi with a Book. It's gonna be the first time I've ever met any of these people, but we've already been talking online, so I'm not worried about, you know, how awkward. Well, maybe I should be worried that it'll be awkward. That's just on myself though. But I'm looking forward to seeing them, especially because I will not be able to go to BookCon this year. And yes, I am wearing the same shirt as I did on my first day because in standard Cindy fashion, I packed more books than I packed clothes. This is my book stash plus three other books that I'm currently using to hoist up my camera. Listen, I feel like I've already exposed how unhygienic I am, so this should not be a surprise. My master class, which I'm going to in a few minutes, is Gathering and Presenting Design Research by The Dropbox Company. And then the workshop that I'm going to is The Arts of Human Connection by Ivan Cash, who is a designer that does these social experiments. I'll try to document it if I don't feel awkward around other people, which means I probably won't document it. I am going to go head off now to catch my Uber and I will update you guys later. Oh yeah. And also there is a discount code for the jewelry that I'm wearing right now um, for Anna Luisa jewelry because in part one it was sponsored by them and I just wanted to mention that the link is still available for you to take advantage of if you want $10 off of jewelry if you're into this kind of thing. If you're not interested, we'll proceed with the rest of the vlog. See ya! with Emma from Emma Books. Thank you for taking the time out to hang out with me and getting into a car crash <laughs> along the way here. Oh my God, I really did. Like, this is Jimmy, and he was like, I'm gonna try and stop Emma from hanging out with Cindy today. And he was like, no thank you, sir. And we're also eating octopus balls, too.
I I think it's fine. Okay. We can always switch it if we want because it seems like nobody goes. Yeah, there. seriously. <gasps> Because she knows, plan. because she knows about the secret society. Yes. They're so she is a part of the secret society. <gasps> Dude, yes. Did I want to get that. Hello, I just finished filming a video with Emma where I basically retold the story of Shadowhunters from the perspective of somebody who has never read or watched the Shadowhunters, and the video ended up being like. I don't know. I think we ended up talking for like two or three hours about the Shadow Hunters, but it was so interesting to hear about the story from someone who feels so passionately about it. And I think that regardless of how I would feel about reading the story or how it's likely that I wouldn't enjoy the story, I still had fun just hearing somebody who has clearly been so impacted by the books and loves it so much and has found so much meaning in it describe it so excitedly like to me i think that's more fun than just shitting on a book for the sake of shitting on a book i was actually surprised to find that i guessed a lot of the plot correctly <laughs> it was just super fun um and emma is really sweet we talked a lot about like booktube and being in the business of being a booktuber which is so fascinating and something that i'm constantly learning it's not something that i would do full-time but it's fascinating to see how people have really made it such an initiative for them and I would never do booktube full-time or do youtube full-time but it's something that I am grateful to have tried out in the first place and to have dipped my toes a little bit because I'm able to meet so many cool people that I would have never hung out with otherwise like Emma and tomorrow Nikki and Jocelyn yeah it's um I'm feeling good tonight I gotta go to sleep now because I have to wake up early for brunch <laughs> so I'm definitely gonna be very tired for the next few days but it's fine. It's worth it for me because um, good memories will be made. And I can't wait to edit the video as well because I'm sure it will be very, very funny. Anyway, I am going to go take a shower. I don't think I will read the rest of Gilded Wolves tonight because it's getting pretty late. It's like almost 1.30 a.m. I think I have like a hundred pages left of the book, but I wasn't able to finish it. I think that when I get on the plane for Portugal tomorrow, I'm just gonna start The Astonishing Color of After. I feel like that's just more fitting for the trip, but I will try to finish it whenever I have time. That's about it for tonight, and I'm gonna go knock out. Bye. Whoa! I don't like when I look at the selfie. I don't actually 
feel repulsed. Oh, fuck. Oh. So cool because, oh wow, I didn't even record it. <laughs> So the next few clips are not gonna make any sense unless I explain what happened because it was a whole fucking mess. Basically, I hung out with Nikki and Jocelyn and we had a really good time. I really enjoyed spending time with them and hanging out at Jocelyn's workplace. Honestly, we got along so naturally that it felt like I was visiting friends from school. I told them that my flight was leaving at 7, so the plan was to basically hang out until 4 p.m. And by the time it was 4 p.m., I grabbed my suitcase and then I checked my itinerary that I printed out. And then I was like, wait a minute. And Nikki was right there and she was like, oh no, Cindy, please do not say wait a minute. And it turns out that my flight left at 1 p.m., not at 7 p.m., which means that I missed my flight that's supposed to go to Washington that in turn is supposed to go to Portugal. So at this point, I'm freaking the fuck out. Fortunately, the flight leaving from Washington to Portugal would leave at 10 p.m., meaning that I had a few more hours to try to scramble to the airport and make it to Washington to make it to that second flight. I get in my Uber to go on my way to the airport, and while I'm in the Uber, I look up for flights that are leaving from New York to Washington that would arrive in time before the 10 p.m. flight to Portugal. So I'm looking up these flights and I try to find the cheapest one, but it's not really that cheap. It's like around $500, which is basically the same price as a round trip from New York to Portugal, which means that I would be paying double the amount just to fix my stupid ass mistake. But you know what? That's the price that you pay for stupidity. I bought a ticket. And then I realized that I bought the ticket on the wrong date because I was searching at the wrong filters. So then I had to cancel the ticket and get a refund, thankfully, because I canceled it within 24 hours. And at this point, my mind is just scrambling to figure out how the hell I'm gonna get to Portugal. And I just stopped myself and I'm like, okay, you know what? Instead of trying to buy a whole new ticket, I'm just gonna wait till I get to the airport and try to see if I can rebook it. I ended up just waiting till I get to the airport and I went to the person at the front desk and I explained what happened. And thankfully, they ended up rebooking me for no charge at all, which is really, really weird. I feel like I should be paying money for such a stupid mistake that I made, but I'm not gonna argue with that. They rebooked me for a new ticket leaving from New York directly to Lisbon. So I actually did not need to go to Washington anymore. However, that flight from New York to Lisbon is leaving from a whole different airport. So I had to take a bus from LGA to EWF, I think it's called, which technically is in New Jersey, but it's about an hour long bus ride. So all in all, I did make it to the flight to Lisbon. Thankfully, the flight was about 10 hours long. I finished the rest of the Gilded Wolves while I was on the plane ride. And I wanna talk about my thoughts on the book. But first, I wanna talk about why this stupidity even happened. <laughs> I thought my flight was leaving at 7 p.m. instead of the actual time at 1 p.m. because I got my times mixed up with when I would actually be arriving to New York from my round trip from Lisbon to New York. I know that sounds kind of confusing, but basically there were a whole bunch of logistics that I had to take care of for the trip that I got mixed up. But here's the thing, I'm not new to planning out these international trips. Like I've traveled um, a couple of times to Europe already and up until now I had never gotten my flight times mixed up, I had never gotten the Airbnb days mixed up. Oh, and that was like another mistake that I made. That morning when I hung out with Nikki and Jocelyn, I found out that I booked my Airbnb a day earlier than when I would actually arrive because I got the time zones mixed up. And I found this out because the Airbnb owner messaged me asking me where I was. So basically, I made two huge mistakes. If you've been watching my past few vlogs, you know at this point that airport mishaps seem to be a very common thing for me. Like last time when I flew to Miami, I forgot my passport. And and then this time, you know, this shit happened. The thing is, I know it's fucking hard to believe, but this 
usually does not happen. I was trying to think about why this was becoming a pattern where I make these stupid mistakes before an important trip. And there were a few things that I noticed were happening around the same time that I was making these mistakes. First thing was, this is when I started vlogging. So maybe being a YouTuber is making me more stupid. But then there was a second conclusion that I came to that I think makes sense. The month leading up to this trip, to New York and to Lisbon, and even the few weeks leading up to my Miami trip from my previous vlog, I have not really been taking care of myself. I mentioned this earlier when I visited the WeWork office and I meditated for five minutes. Those five minutes that I meditated were the most relaxed I've been for a long time, maybe for all year. And I realized that my default state has always been either very stressed or tired or sleep deprived. Actually, it's like all of those things. When I had forgotten my passport to Miami, that was when I had spent the past few weeks trying to put together that photo shoot for Google and trying to figure out all the logistics for that shoot and trying to do a good job at it while I was also planning the Asian readathon among all these other responsibilities that I was kind of juggling. And then leading up to this trip to New York, I was planning out all the logistics for the conference and networking with certain people and figuring out what sessions that I needed to go to for the conference, as well as the subsequent trip to Lisbon afterward where I was planning a whole itinerary and trying to figure out all of the different hurdles of being alone in a foreign country and trying to figure out how to survive there. All of that topped with like around three to five hours of sleep every night, I think fried my brain cells. <laughs> I wish I could show you a diagram of my brain because it felt like my brain was constantly thinking, go, go, go. I was constantly thinking about what I needed to do and what the next thing I needed to do was. And I don't think I ever really took a break. And that was the case for the week of New York and pretty much the whole month prior to that, or maybe even most of the year. I don't know. It was kind of like a blur to me. The point is I have been the type of person who has been trying to be constantly productive and constantly busy and constantly working on stuff out of my own choice. I plan things to the hour. So I'll plan working time, but then I'll also plan socializing time, which means that for New York, I was basically busy the whole time at the conference, but when I have my off time, I'm scheduling socialization with other booktubers because I know that this is a very rare chance that I'll be able to hang out with them as often. And then when I would go back to my hotel room, I would have to work on logistics for my Portugal trip and trying to figure out what transportation pass to buy or what museum pass to buy or how to schedule certain museums that are in close proximity to each other and just all these things that are kind of just floating around in my head that I haven't really had time to just like chill the fuck out and decompress. Being a workaholic and being constantly busy and overexerting myself is something that has been very normal to me because that is something that I thought has been working. But what I'm starting to realize now, as I'm reflecting on these previous lapses of judgment, I'm realizing that this lifestyle and this hustle culture or whatever that I'm trying to implement is not sustainable for my body because I'm getting three to five hours of sleep every night. My brain is so sleep deprived and so tired and so exhausted. My body just can't keep up with it. Like I'm, I feel like I used to have more stamina, but now I just, my brain is deteriorating because I keep on overexerting myself. So I got really anxious leading up to my trip to Portugal because at this point, I feel like I cannot trust my brain, but I have set out this strict itinerary where I literally planned out every hour that I would be in Lisbon when I didn't even know if I could make it. Fortunately, I did make it. And obviously, since I'm filming this here, that means that I survived Portugal. So basically what I've realized from this week in New York, this chaotic week in New York, a city that prioritizes hustle culture and being constant and being productive is that I need to slow down and I need to take time for myself and practice meditation or whatever the fuck will help me slow down because it's all about balance. Balance is so important. And if I'm trying to be working 100% of the time, it's not sustainable for me. And I realize the consequences of that now. So I just wanted to pop in and give an update for why 
this has all happened and maybe give some context for why Miami was kind of a mess as well. As proof of that, I actually started journaling while I was in New York. I literally wrote this down the night before I hung out with Nikki and Jocelyn and missed my flight. I haven't felt contentment in a very long time. Don't remember the last time. I'm just constantly tired and preoccupied about the next things I have to do. I'm burnt out. Constant productivity is how I distract myself, trick my brain into having meaning. But now I'm realizing constant productivity is not sustainable for my body. So now it feels like I'm speeding in a car that won't stop and I'm just trying not to crash and burn. Literally, when I missed my flight to Lisbon, I was thinking, this is it. This is the fucking time where I'm crashing and burning. That's basically what happened. I could tell that I was um, going downhill from there. I learned my lesson and now I'm gonna try my best to just balance shit out. Definitely need to work on that and just wanted to update about that and give some context for why I have been a dumb bitch lately. Besides that, I want to give some concluding thoughts to The Gilded Wolves because I finished this on the plane. Overall, I rated this three stars. I read the author's note and I feel like reading Roshani Chokshi's intentions for what she wanted to do with the book made a lot of sense for why I felt very hopeful about this book and I saw the potential and promise of it because Essentially, what she was trying to do is take this era that we knew of 19th century Moulin Rouge that is known for being this glitzy and glamorous time period, but in actuality, it covers up a lot of issues that were going on in society like colonialism and colorism and anti-Semitism. And she wanted to write a book about characters in that time period that have been on the sidelines, who have experienced through those things. I think that her idea and the concept of the book is amazing, and conceptually speaking, it has so much potential to be better than Six of Crows. However, the execution itself was not that great. As I reflected on this whole book after I was done with it, I realized that she was trying to do too many things at once. She was trying to pull out a heist novel that incorporated a bunch of complicated math equations and then historical context. And then she tried to incorporate racism and colonialism and anti-Semitism. And all of these things are fascinating individually. But when you combine them together, it loses like the cohesion of the story. And then it just becomes like a clusterfuck. Another big weakness is that the characters just felt very one note. I did not care for any of them, like at all. I was hoping that we would get to read more background stories about the characters or how they even knew each other or why they're even friends and why they even care about each other. But we didn't really get any background information. And I feel like because we didn't get any of that, it makes it harder to sympathize for them or even understand why we should be rooting for them. I just want to say though, in particular, I don't give a fuck about Tristan, okay? I just want to make that clear. I'll talk more in depth about my feelings on all the characters in my wrap up, but I just want to say in particular, Tristan is the character I care the least about because I knew right away from reading him that he was the weakest fucking link in the group. And you know what? I hope that his pet spider dies. That's right, I fucking said it. I hope his spider dies. So overall, three stars. And when I went to Portugal, I ended up reading tons of other books like The Astonishing Color of After, A Thousand Beginnings and Endings, I'm Afraid of Men. And then when I came back, I also read Girls of Paper and Fire. But I will talk more in depth about that in my reading vlogs for when I'm in Portugal and obviously in my wrap up as well. But for now, this is my conclusion to the New York vlogs. If you made it this far, thanks for <laughs> putting up with the messiness. And yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye.